So if you have any questions uh, regarding the, uh, the task, the assignment that you have for this week, since some of the colleagues already got in touch with me and uh, asked for uh, some clarifications regarding the output as a result of your assignment. Can you please uh, um, just present your questions if you have any before we proceed with the topics for today? Any clarifications needed? I see that some people are writing, so I have a couple of minutes for this to just be on the safe side regarding the, the assignment since um, some of the questions refer to the final output as a result of the, of the assign, assignment, whether it should be only one uh, brief report containing not less than 6,000 words or it should be more. So just please uh, come up with your questions and I will clarify this before we proceed. Uh, I, I can be should, so the first question goes uh, like should we elaborate several cases with similar key, uh, similar key elements and the differences and how many cases should be elaborated so it's up to you to decide as a group about the number of the cases to be elaborated in your paper uh, this means that you first begin uh, each of you has kind of an individual task at the beginning where you analyze different cases uh, and different practices of corporate social responsibility. As a result of this individual analysis, you uh, get in touch with your colleagues in the group and decide on the best practices or some examples that, or practices that you want to share and out of which some, ex some lessons will be learned. So it's up to you to make this uh, structure and uh, I already replied this to some of your uh, colleagues saying that uh, it's up to you to decide about the structure of the paper. There is no guidance on this. Uh, the only guidance that you have is that you analyze practices and you realize what needs to be highlighted and what should be emphasized, emphasized as a result of your work. Maybe you would uh, identify some practices that, that have been used and proved to be a bad example in the work of the organization and you just give it as an example to uh, indicate that some problems or some barriers could happen as a result of uh, the application of certain practices or something else. Maybe some practices prove to be efficient in different organizational contexts but not, in, but are not applicable to many countries. Maybe in the process of anal analyzing of these practices, you would identify that it's impossible to implement something in our context, in our countries where we live. So it's up to you to decide about the structure regarding this. It doesn't have to be a paper containing, um, a paper containing just uh, the best practices. I realize that some of you uh, complain that there is a lot of noise and echo. Is this a case with the others or can or you can hear me clearly? Can you hear me well? Yes, echo is there. Yes. Okay, in that case, maybe I can ask for some technical support by by the colleagues here. Some of you say there is no problem with the echo. Yes, no echo. Okay. We'll fix that in a moment. So just a second, please. Is it clear now? Can you hear me please? Okay, I need some more voices. Okay. 
Thank you. Okay, in that case, we can continue. So, um, I, I think I clarified the issue about the practices to be reflected in, in your paper. So, it's both uh, positive and negative practices. If we can learn something of those practices, if there are some barriers in the implementation of the corporate social responsibility tools and techniques and methods that we use. Uh, so please feel free to organize the paper the way you, you, you think is the, is the best for you. Is there any other question regarding this? So uh, you have, as a result of this work, you have two individual outputs, out of which the first one is the report, which is not less than 6,000 uh, characters, in in a in a paper that is uh, uploaded in a word format or pdf file the second output is the presentation that you compile as a group so there is one individual report one uh, powerpoint presentation and you upload this file so i can easily track your work uh, the knowledge that you gathered the, the findings that you have the thinking process that you have, and as a result of this, a summary, a brief summary, uh, uh, which you share with me, but it's also a product that you can, you can see this product as something that could be presented to, to some audiences, which should understand how you work and what should be transferred as a knowledge. Is this clear? Any additional explanation needed? Do you need some additional information about it? So you have analyzed different examples of corporate social responsibility. And you present them. As a result of this, you, you draw some conclusions. Those conclusions are a basis to structure your paper. And you decide how to structure it, either by countries, either by types of methods, either by efficiency, or by uh, or by the problems they encountered in practice. Is this sufficiently clear? Please feel free to bring up any questions you might have. I'm, I'm available for your questions on email as well, but uh, you, can, you can do it now at the very beginning of the, of the lecture. Any confirmation that this was clear? Okay, okay. You you might have additional questions uh, until the end of the of the lecture. It's not a problem at all to ask the questions, as long as we stick to the time frame for this uh, for today's lecture. And then afterwards, you can get in touch with me by email. Okay. So the the topic for uh, today's uh, lecture is ethical decision making and corporate social responsibility. In this week, we generally talk about the following things. Ethical decision-making and sustainability. Basis of corporate social responsibility. Corporate social responsibility and leadership tasks and functions. We go through the process of analysis of the corporate social responsibility and the ethical thinking by strictly analyzing, analyzing the role of the leaders in the organization because they encounter Many times they encounter difficulties in the process. Sometimes they have some moral dilemmas regarding the way they are expected to organize the work. And many times, of course, they use some practices which are uh, kind of a stimulation and a motivation for the workers to, uh, to bring more sustainability of the organization and, of course, some more efficient results. Uh, when we talk about ethics, um, one of the things that we come across is the definition of ethics and the elements, the elements of the of the de definition. Uh, I tried to compile compile some uh, uh, some strict definitions that could be useful to understand this process. In a general sense, it's a code or a framework of moral principles and values that governs the behavior of a person or a group with respect to what is right or wrong. But sometimes 
as we can realize, it's difficult to uh, decide what is right or what is wrong. That's why, that's why one of the most preferable methods of work uh, for the leaders of the organization is to be in a two-way uh, communication with the employees who can be the voice of organization, but who can also contribute to the resolution of, of different uh, ethical issues. So, in general, uh, ethics set standards as to what is good or bad in conduct and decision making. Ethics deals with internal values that are part of a corporate culture and shapes decisions concerning social responsibility with respect to the external environment. We continue with some brief explanation of this definition. In general, we also say that the ethics is the study of moral ob obligation involving the distinction between right and wrong or right and wrong in the work workplace when we uh, use the process of so-called value management. Uh, in general, the ethics, uh, the ethics we find in companies contains the same elements as the ethics in the social economic context in which they operate. Uh, this definition of the term ethics uh, bring, brings us uh, to the conclusion that it's very important how we communicate with our stakeholders with the environment in which the organization operates. These audiences and these stakeholders are different, but what is most important when the ethics is concerned is that we take into consideration what the values are, what the requirements of these different stakeholders are, and um, how they perceive the organization and what barriers we have, what kind of barriers we face in the communication with different stakeholders. This, uh, uh, this uh, message is very important when we um, uh, try to come up with a methodology or with a strategy on how to deal with different stakeholders and how to take into consideration their requirements to define further on our strategies for corporate social uh, responsibility. That's why we say the company is a system that is open to the environment, governed by persons who live in specific context and are of the, the, of the aspirations, culture and mor morality that characterize them. Ethics is always about making decisions and uh, some, dis some issues are really difficult to resolve. Um, uh, especially when it comes to, to this uh, polar ends, whether something is right or it is wrong. Uh, as a result of today's presentation, it will, um, one of the conclusions would be that uh, it's very important to be in, um, uh, to take in, uh, con into consideration the perceptions of uh, our audiences. But when we talk about audiences, it's very important to take uh, into consideration that these are audiences are both external and internal audiences. We refer to the employees and to the staff of the organization as an audience as well. Especially when we talk from the perspective of a leader or, or a manager of the organization. These people who are part of the team uh, regularly identify different issues, different problems or different, different barriers in the execution of their tasks and it's very important to hear their voice. But sometimes there are some management styles which, uh, which pre prevents, uh, prevent this process of regular um, uh, obtaining of feedback by the staff. So it's very important from the management's perspective to stimulate the internal feedback uh, and treat the employees not just as a staff of the organization, but also as someone who can contribute as, a, as an audience to, or a stakeholder to the, to the organization. Um, this brings us to the conclusion that the, ethicals, the ethical readers are very, leaders are very, very important in the uh, process of organizing the work, in the defining of the structures and the system of ethical work. Uh, regardless of the fact that we talk about some definitions or some standards of how ethics, ethics is defined, 
it's very important to take into consideration that uh, we are the ones who decide how to uh, define ethic, the ethical system in the organization itself. Some issues are important, very important, and they should be given a higher priority in the work just because the specific setting is such, or just because we've, we've been regularly getting complaints or uh, remarks by our stakeholders that, uh, 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 that could help us a lot to define the course of work in the future. Uh, that's why the leaders who, uh, whose, um, whose priority is to um, bring ethics on a higher, uh, higher level um, uh, are very important in the organization and that's why we say that they see their constituencies as not just follower, followers but rather as stakeholders striving to achieve the same common purpose. But we also have to have in mind that sometimes um, even though we try to have the most efficient practices of work and the most efficient methods of getting feedback by different stakeholders, sometimes we have uh, obstructions in these processes and problems that we come across. Sometimes just we have kind of an unloyal competition and um, which bring us some problems in the execution of our regular operations. But it's also important to have those uh, obstructions in, um, in our system to register, to identify those problems and see how to deal with these so-called difficult audiences or difficult groups of stakeholders. At the end, after all, everyone is important. Uh, and from our perspective, uh, we are the ones who decide how to bring them into our system and how to deal with these uh, tough situations. Leaders are first and foremost members of their own organizations and stakeholder groups. Uh, as such, their purpose, their vision and values are for the benefit of the organization and the, and the key stakeholders. Um, when talking about their values, their vision, their perspectives, their purpose, it's very important that they embody the vision and the values in everything that they do, both internally and externally, uh, as a result of their work. Um, this will be um, very clear when we uh, define the strategy for corporate social responsibility or when we define the methods of two-way communication with our uh, stakeholders. So let's uh, uh, shortly discuss um, what are the specifics or what are the characteristics of ethical leaders or something that is expected from the management of, um, of, the, uh, of the organization. Someone complains that, or I can hold, can you, can you hear me um, because I couldn't understand the latest remark. Is everything okay? Okay, thank you. So let's start with, uh, with the characteristics of the ethical leaders. It's very important that they articulate and embody the purpose and values of the organization. This applies to all the techniques used, all the strategies used for communication, all the methods, all the strategies that we implement. Uh, they need to focus on organizational success rather, rather than on their personal ego. Um, we, um, uh, we know that sometimes this might become a real issue in the organization, particularly, particularly if it's a kind of an authoritarian style of, um, of doing things, and we are all witnesses all, or we, uh, we've been hearing about these problems. Someone asked for restarting of the Skype and trying again. Uh, uh, ju just a second, please, to do this.
Can you hear me now? There are obviously there are lots of marinas here, and that's why the confusion happened. <laughs> I know of at least two or three marinas that are present today, and that's why we have an we have an issue. But now you can you can hear me, right? Happened with my PowerPoint now. Just a second, please. Technical issue is resolved, and I'm sorry for this interruption, but we couldn't uh, easily deal with, uh, with the problem that the power presentation wasn't here. <laughs> okay. okay, thank you. So we continue with the characteristics of ethical leaders. Um, we said that it's very important that they focus on organizational success rather than on their personal ego. Um, the third thing that it's quite important is that they find best people and develop them. But what it means, what does it mean to have uh, to have uh, the best people on board? Uh, can you please um, take part in just briefly in this uh, in this part of the of the discussion and just mention who are, in your opinion, the best people in in an organization? Can you just just bring up some ideas. Who are the best people in the organization? Who can be considered the best ones? Yes, employees, but what kind of an employee? What should be their characteristics? Team player, yes. Pios, okay. Reasonable, of course. Yes. So it, it is not just people uh, who um, 
are efficient in their work. Yes, high efficiency, of course, but this is also a two-way process. If we stimulate people who have reasonable thinking, who are ambitious, who bring up some creative ideas in the organization, we can, as a result of this process, uh, have high efficiency or efficient outputs as a result of, uh, of the system. Desire for learning? Yes, of course. So we can easily make a list of things that are important that could be easily uh, discussed with, with potential leaders on how to organize their systems. But does this happen in the practice? Or we encounter different problems in the practice? And what kind of problems happen? Who are the ones, who are the ones that are uh, mostly stimulated to continue working? Just bring up some bad experiences if you if you have a, happen to to uh, know about those cases or if you encounter some cases like this. Is creativity um, always stimulated the desire for learning or we have some obstructions and when do, when do these problems happen in the organizations any ideas unequal treatment might be one of the reasons yes when uh, leaders or bosses prefer to work with just a couple of people just because they have this kind of a perception at the beginning that they could be of benefit for the organization and other voices are not heard. Or sometimes when, when leaders have remarks about their work. Of course. Of course, those who are not motivated, uh, they're not interested for the success uh, of the company and they just do it uh, in a way as a flat line. They just continue working just for the sake of those seven or eight hours and it's done. There is influence of the corruption, weak economy in the country, self-orientation of the managers, greedy employers, employers, many reasons again and just another proof that uh, leaders uh, are sometimes much more focused on their personal egos they are very selective they can be very selective in um, in the process of motivating people but um, if we encounter such practices what is what is the way out of this what is the way out? What can change this situation? Regulations? Like codes of conduct? Better organization and structure? Change of management maybe? The situations like this prove that we do not have internal practices and methods that could guide our work. So ethics is very often connected to the practices that we have set up, like codes, like ethical frameworks, like uh, regulations, as some of you said. Yes, it's, it's of course an issue of different, different corporate culture, different styles different cultural settings of course but uh, my idea is just to uh, just to share with you that um, often this is a result of, of a very um, uh, big issue in the organization that there are no practices set up in place that could be used as a guidance to check our work or our styles of work our systems from time to time the absence of methods of um, uh, analyzing the, the problems that the employees face. But on the other hand, what might happen on the side of the employees or on the side of the staff? 
if we have this authoritarian style of work, they might be afraid to just be motivated or to share their issues, their problems. And if they are aware that some of the uh, uh, employees are much more motivated, then they are motivated that this could uh, be another problem. But most of all, the absence of mechanisms that could control what we do internally, but of course externally with our uh, different stakeholders and audiences. This bring up, brings us to another very important characteristic or a style of work of the ethical reader, uh, leaders. They should create a living conversation about ethics, values, and the creation of value for stakeholders. When doing your um, assignment, I would motivate you to uh, check the, the, uh, this example about the Johnson & Johnson former Jim, uh, CEO Jim Burke and the Telenol product recall in the 80s. Uh, they, maybe you've heard about the recall of these products when some problems happened in the past. And uh, this uh, created a very big crisis for the reputation of the organization. But how they dealt with this problem is that they discussed about it in different ways, mostly internally, on how to deal with these difficult ch challenges. So it goes um, in, the, in the area of uh, issue management and crisis management at the same time. But it is very important that uh, if we um, come across situations when our ethics is endangered, our uh, uh, reputation is in danger that we talk about these problems and have a lively conversation about these issues. Which brings us again to the conclusion that we need to have a system in place. Create mechanisms of dissent. This needs to be made part of the organizational culture, not just a line item in a compliance program document. And it's very clear as a, as a guideline on how to, on how to uh, continue working. We have here the um, famous workout process of General Electrics, where workers meet to decide how to fix, fix problems and make the company better. It was a way um, for frontline employees to push back against the established policies and authority of management. Uh, of course, these regular practices of discussions, of regular feedbacks, of regular reactions, complaints, uh, mechanisms, uh, help lead us to better decisions, more engaged employees, and an increased likely, likelihood of avoiding damaging mistakes. Uh, the process of developing the, these mechanisms of dissent could be different in different organizational uh, settings. Um, they depend on the leadership style, they depend on the culture, as you already agreed. Um, but it's very crucial that the leadership take, uh, takes um, the control of this process and uh, value this, uh, 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 these different methods, these different cultural styles, these, these different problems that, uh, that can happen in the execution of, of our work. We continue with the characteristics of ethical leaders. They have uh, to have a charitable understanding of the other values, of the values of the other people or the employees and the stakeholders. They can understand why different people make different choices but still have a strong grasp on what they would do and why they would do it. Uh, it's very um, important for the leaders uh, to bring the conversation and discussion in the organization in a, um, in a, on a different level. They should, um, they should be able to recognize what the problems are, but also uh, to help in the guidance, to help in the understanding of these problems and in the understanding of the methods how to resolve the problems. Another thing that is important to make tough calls while being imaginative. They have to make a lot of difficult decisions. Sometimes this means that they uh, change the that they change the uh, uh, strategy of work and uh, they, they sometimes change uh, the decisions made with the, with the staff uh, if something proves to be inefficient in the, in the, in, in the work. 
Uh, it is not just sufficient if the ethical leader does the right thing. It's very important that he does the right thing for the business because the mission, the vision, the values of the organization should be uh, should be communicated. They should know the limits of the values and uh, the ethical principles.